Okay, hello and welcome everyone to our first uh, first round of the Vintage Formula One Lotus 49 Series. And uh, my name is Jason Chad. I will be your host. Uh, we are just getting started with the practice session. The practice session will be roughly about an hour and a half. Uh, followed by a 10-minute qualifying session uh, where you will be able to put in about four laps. On the track now we have Edgar Santinelli, otherwise known as Frito Sport, uh, a very well-known gamer and sim racer. Checking out his really cool livery that he has on his Lotus 79. The series is a real casual series for the Wednesday nights that we put together during this silly pandemic. Uh, it's a fixed setup, as I mentioned before, so that people can just show up. They don't have to spend uh, hundreds of hours working on a setup to be competitive. And the playing field, uh, I worked on the setup with a couple of other Lotus 79 guys. Uh, that really know kind of what they're doing. We just uh, it's a little gradual and a little more consistent so we can have some close racing. I'm going to jump on the uh, practice session with all of the uh, 
fast guys uh, with some hopefully some pretty cool onboard footage. And then when the qualifying session starts, I'll jump off and, and let all the big boys put their laps in and, and have some fun. Whoops. A little bit of a snafu there. Let's see if anybody else is on track right now. It's still early in the session. Still got uh, plenty of time to get some laps in. Let me go on ahead and jump on board for a little bit here, do, in, do a few laps, have some fun, and people start uh, showing up. I'll jump off. Talk a little bit about the drivers. If the drivers are, ooh, that's a, that was a tough one. I don't even know how he made it over the fence there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's part of the track. Okay, so let's uh, let's jump on board. Let's have some fun. Anything for hosting, Jason. No worries at all. Time to have some fun. Hopefully, I, I know that there's going to be some uh, Lotus 79 regular guys uh, hopefully showing up today, so it should be fun. Ah, very nice. Okay, everybody, as you can see, people are starting to trickle in. Joe V11 is a... Uh, a go-kart racer and a former student of SSI Racing School. Very fast, very consistent. He's actually won a, a few of our casual events that we've put on. So look for him today to be somebody that potentially could run up front and potentially could win. Um, I've got to pump up my clutch again. There we go. All right, here we go.
down to first gear. That was crazy. All right. That was fun doing a couple laps there. Let's go watch some of the other guys. as the day comes along. As he figures out the racetrack. So we've got someone right behind him. Connected, but doesn't look like they're turning the laps in. So we are about 55 minutes into the practice session. Again, we have about an hour and a half practice session. And then from there, we're going to uh, we're going to qualify. Four laps, four clean laps. So if you go off the road or if you use too much curb and you cut it too much, then it will just go out on the lap. So very important to do speed enough to Always fighting for that extra tarmac. You get those little bits of time. That's the fine line that you have to run. Making sure that you don't cut too much. This is a, a pretty exciting racetrack. I just got off of it so I can know. And uh, you've got a lot of flying flat corners that are really gut checkers to see how far and how deep you can go from the flat without having to worry about spinning. Edgar, see how he's coming along. He's improved. He's improved by about a second. Oh, he's improved quite a bit actually. He's improved by about four seconds uh, since his opening laps. So he's trailing around in third place now. Jovi has got him in a half a second. Difficult to tell what uh, what the actual pace is going to be just just simply on the, uh, uh, the practice session because it, it uh, if you go off the road if you cut the corner too much it'll still count your lap time so the real definitive check and balance is going to be during qualifying to see if you can match that pace driving clean laps. But for now, everyone's just happy enough to move along and try to figure out the racetrack. Lumpkin. Lumpkin out of Texas. So we've got a lot of American drivers here, which makes sense. We're on West Coast time, Pacific Standard time. And so for everyone, it's roughly about the same time. It's about 5 p.m. Second. Oh, so that's what I was talking about there. It, it, uh, it's, he's not lacking any courage whatsoever. 
Try to keep it flat through that first corner there and get on the power as early as possible, which is kind of the way you have to drive these cars, apparently, in you know, order to hustle them around the corners. Downforce cars are always a little tricky uh, because the more speed carry, the more downforce is achieved, but there is a limit. And the interesting thing about downforce cars as well is there's a smaller window between grip and no grip. So it really does benefit the driver to, to put in the time, put in the laps to kind of understand there's a limit given the setup that you're in. And it's going to be the driver that, that adapts the quickest that will figure out the secrets of that car, that setup on this racetrack in these conditions. Always interesting to see how these guys adapt all of the different things that have thrown their way. And then you got to do that with 10 or 12 other drivers on the grid who are trying to push you off the track or, or beat you. All right, back on board with Joby. Now let's see, he's coming around. It looks like this is definitely an outlap. So around the first corner, coming into Beckett's. The switchback, very exciting series of corners there. He's deciding to take the middle line through there, which is interesting. Avoiding the curves. Driving very clean. A little slide there. Off the road. So see that? There's a possibility that that will eliminate his lap if he decides to do that during the qualifying session. So he's got about another half an hour to figure out what it's going to take to get a clean lap around here and hopefully meet up front in the Okay, Stewart. Stewart from Texas. That corner is a tricky one indeed. Nice line through there. On the brakes, sliding the car and entry. Sliding on exit. He's having a little bit of connection issues there. I'm seeing Jovi has got some green. So if he can hold it together, if he didn't go off the road or anything, let's see what his lap time is going to do. Not that lap, so he was good through sector. Oh, he did, yes. He did indeed improve. So he's now in first place in the practice, so he's obviously figured out some things out on the racetrack. Slowing it down, no need to get involved with other cars on the racetrack during the practice session. Let's see who else do we got here. Michael is trudging along. Maybe he had a little bit of an incident or he's just enabling his tires to cool off a little bit. The tires do get overheated eventually if you do a lot of wheel spin or spin outs or slides. It'll heat up the tire. Maybe he's doing some practice starts as well. That's also going to be important for the race. Uh, just simply, not, not a good place to do that. Not a good place. Yeah, maybe they know each other. Okay. In the northwest. Tony Walda. Tristan Peter. West as well. We got a couple of Northwest guys here. Northwest, uh, I'm assuming, is Northwest. <laughs> okay, we've got a couple of other guys that have just jumped on the ball. Brady Sappenfield from Indiana. So he's about three hours ahead of us. It's about eight thirty this time. Probably had his dinner already. He's ready to go right got Austin Fairfield from the Midwest. Everybody's got some really cool liveries here. I see one livery there. Is that Caleb? No. That's, yeah, that's great. He's got the, uh, the Kmart livery there, which is reminiscent of Nigel Mansell's IndyCar. Uh, his IndyCar season in 1990. Three or four, I can't remember. I believe it's M3 or M3. Oh, actually, it might be 93 or M2. Uh, where he came over to America.
America and he's basically showing us Americans how road racing is done. Go back over to Frito, still trailing around in third place. Oh, he's off the road there. Taking a shortcut through Beckett's. Get back on the racetrack. There's Kurt. Kurt up on his tires, so he's probably going to have to wait a couple more corners uh, for his tires to clean up before he can start leaning on his car again. Looks like Jilby's back out. Let's see if he can improve on his time as well. I call him Jovi, but his name is Joseph. Joseph Levin. Much before, and he is a former student of mine. He trained with the SSI Racing School for two and a half, almost three years on simulators and go karts. He's a multiple champion in indoor karting and outdoor karting, multiple podium finisher with Ron White Racing, legendary Ron White, friend of mine as well. And uh, now he's he's really kind of uh, taking some time off from, from go-karts and doing a lot of uh, RC racing. Find that a lot of, of uh, go-kart racers that also do RC racing, so he's cutting his teeth in that successful with NorCal Hobbies out in San Jose, California. Their indoor and outdoor combination racetracks. So he's, it looks like he's improved again. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he's, he's just now coming around. And he did not improve that time, but it I think what he could possibly be doing is, is trying to get familiar with how to run a consistent pace in this car. All right, jump back over to Edgar. He's really pushing those limits there. Pushing those Go ahead, sorry. Okay, okay. Right, behind, right behind him was uh, Tony. Oh, yep, same thing. Everyone is finding the limit of these very tricky race car. Part of the reason we picked this car is because it, it's an exciting car. It's a throwback to free traction control, manual gearbox, and uh, you know, old school technology with sort of new school era. The underside or the, uh, the underbody uh, effect of these cars is essentially one large inverted airplane wing. Late Colin Chapman had discovered this feature. There's a side skirt that seals the air underneath the car, which essentially creates a pressure differential and subsequently increased downforce. The challenge with these cars was always the fact that they had to make them extra stiff because they relied so heavily on the right height, uh, a constant right height. You can imagine mid corner right here, where Jovi was at right there. If that side skirt broke, the air would wash out underneath. He would lose all the downforce and he would go straight into those walls. Which I believe that modern Formula One is revisiting this aerodynamic feature for the modern F1 cars uh, simply because the tracks are much safer than they used to be. In the 60s and 70s, they had walls and barriers that were right up against the racetrack. If the side skirt broke and the air washed out underneath them, the driver was very likely to be the barrier. Now we've got a lot of runoff area. The tracks are much safer. Uh, so it is interesting to Okay, back over to Frito. Oh, looks like uh, Tony Walda, out of California, is now jumped up to third place. Uh, I'm not going to be in the race, so he's actually in second place at this at this moment. Um, he's obviously found some time on the racetrack, and um, 
He may be up there with, with Jovi. Anything can happen in the race. Practice is one thing, qualifying is another thing. Racecraft is what it's really all about. Okay, he's going back out on the racetrack or is he staying in the pits? Edgar can improve on his time, flat through here, flat that downhill section. If we were in the real world, we would probably feel uh, a pretty significant compression at the bottom of that hill, reminiscent of the Sears Point Raceway coming out of the carousel there. There's a significant compression at the bottom of the carousel, probably similar to this layout at uh, historic Silverstone. Has he improved? He has. He's improved by another tenth of a second. So now only trailing by 2.3. Let's go back to our fifth place runner who's just chosen a all black livery, which is nice in itself as well. Has he improved? Oh, off the road there. Okay, looks like he's abandoned this lap. Edgar coming back around. Oh, he did improve. Yep, he improved by another three tenths, so he jumps up to fourth place uh, ahead of Edgar. Edgar's back out on the racetrack. Let's see if he can do some improvements here as well. Looks pretty clean through there. Nice slide. Some drivers chose to uh, use that off-road there to carry more speed, and some drivers are keeping it tight and clean. Flat again through here, around the corner, braking, sliding, and a little wide, this is the apex, down to second gear. I believe second gear is what's, what people are using. First gear is a little too short. Roll on the power. Very difficult to judge this corner as it's almost like a double apex. He hit the first apex too wide, and he improves up to fourth place. So he's now found something on the racetrack. Let's see if up, and he's off. Okay, Jovi's still out there. Running some consistent lap times. Jovi has chose a Liget livery for his vehicle. DJ, reminiscent of the uh, Jean-Pierre Jabouy. Uh, DJ is a French, was a French company, or actually is still a French company. Very nice livery. And his father is Scott Levin, who was a track marshal for Formula One, IndyCar, and uh, probably some other disciplines as well. Got to travel the world to France, Le Mans, uh, Europe, America. So, Jovi is no stranger to the motorsports world. Been exposed to it since he was probably born. All right, who else is out on the track now? Tony, we've got a good group here. So this is the interesting part of this uh, event as well, is you can see here, these cars do generate a fair amount of a slipstream effect. In the race, especially down the long straightaways, if you can get a good run off the corners, you'll get a good start. However, we have chosen the lone qualifying, so nobody gets any kind of slipstream assist for their qualifying efforts. They will have to figure it out either here in the practice session or during the race on how to utilize the slipstream effect. Slipstream, for those that aren't familiar with the term, is essentially a pocket of air that is punched through by the car in front of you. It creates less air turbulence. So the behind is able to creep up closer and closer, ever closer. And the tricky part with that in the motorsports world is the closer you get, less downforce you get on the front wing. Since these cars rely heavily on the aero underneath the vehicle, it's probably not as much of a problem. 
since their front wing and their rear wing, is, or the front wing particularly, is, is usually meant just to stabilize between the front and rear. Okay, let's jump on board the Nigel Mansell livery. Lotus of Brady, Indiana. Has he improved? He has improved. Still trailing around in sixth place. And I don't know if Edgar is still waiting in the pits. Taking a break. But we'll see if he has an answer in practice. These lap times. Decent grid that we've got here. They've got a pretty good spread here. Now during the race, especially the first couple of laps, you can probably expect to see quite a few dicey moves. Silverstone is, is known for uh, a fairly good amount of runoff area, and the curves are not tremendously big. So you can get away with riding some of the curves without disturbing uh, the vehicle too much. But it's still not something that you want to do with the stiffness from the vehicle. You want to get as close to them as possible, but don't ride them too much there. Okay. So, Hunter Crumb from the Northwest has found some time as well. So the, so the spread between first through fourth place is now only eight tenths of a second. Lumpkin just jumped up to fifth. He's found some time. He's trying to figure out the setup. Again, as I mentioned before, it's a fixed setup. So some of these guys may be used to driving their own setup. They got used to the way their their preferences are. It is a little bit tricky to a setup car that somebody else uh, put together, namely myself and uh, another gentleman by the name of Jack Wisdom. Is a racer, a sim racer, and a real racer that I raced with in the race for nine many moons ago. I know very well. He's very knowledgeable on the setup, but it is difficult for someone who's not familiar with the setup to jump in and go quick. So these guys are doing a really good job here. That livery looks like a full line. be reminiscent of the uh, late great Jill Junior. Sideways. That's the cool thing about iRacing and this service, namely trading paints, is they enable you to run custom liveries. And the fun part of it is if you're a vintage Formula One, you can go look for or make your own custom livery based on your favorite driver, your favorite and even do some advertising for you. Chance from Brady. Chance from Brady. there. Oh, they did a little tandem slide there. Get them back on. I don't want to do that too much there. That's very bad. Brady looks like he's in the green in, in section four. So let's see if he can hold it together. Maybe do some, oh, I think he might, oh no, he, that was not him, that was, I think, Crum. Brady's coming around. If he can keep it clean, he might find some improvement here. shifting mid corner there so you got to be careful with that too I was doing some testing earlier today and I actually blew the motor uh, when I accidentally went from, from uh, fourth or fifth to second instead of going from fifth to fourth uh, it's something that you definitely have to be aware of so did he improve 
must have had some kind of snafu uh, in, in sec section four because he did not improve his time when he crossed the finish line. So let's go. It looks like Joby's out at it again. He's out back. As I speak, speak of the devil. Third place guy is now Chance Crumb. So he is within three tenths of a second of Jovi. He is figuring some things out. So the gap is decreasing it all the time here. We have what may be shaping up to be. Down the straightaway here, roughly about 152, 153 miles an hour. Uh, not a lot of top speed with these cars, just simply because they create so much downforce. Downforce equals drag, but their cornering speeds are pretty phenomenal. So make up for all of your time in the corners and under braking. as well. Down chip another gear there. Down the tight line, down the second gear. Just a little bit wide. Back on the brakes, so he's choosing, he's choosing a different line. You're going to see some creativity with that last corner. Different people will have different approaches. How they want to negotiate that corner. Some people will figure it out a late entry. Some people will figure it out an early entry. Okay, Smock is going out lap. Um, does not improve. So let's go look at Caleb. Smock. Out lap. Also has an interesting livery there. If I'm not familiar with it, it may be the Craco. We'll take a closer look at it later on. Let's see if he can make some improvements. Jovi has improved on his lap time. So now he's at a 132 flat. 132 flat. He's setting the standard for the racetrack today. So Crum and Gualda have their work cut out for them. We've got about another nine minutes. Start of qualifying. Virus, so schmuck. Oh my goodness, that is a horrendous accident. I, I must have missed it. I think he probably caught a curb, but it sent him straight into the pit wall. Okay, Crum is now out for another out lap. Let's follow him around and see if he can close that gap up to Jovi. He's got about eight tenths of a second to use to find out on the racetrack as well as Tony Gualda. He's got about 1.2 seconds that he needs to find as well. Let's see of these drivers who is going to opt to figure out practice starts, getting mentally prepared for a qualifying lap where you have to just be on the limit Four laps, which is 
an absolutely different mindset that you have when you go to race. Qualifying will be looking for that 10 tenths on the limit of the road, of your driving abilities, getting all of your marks as consistently, as religiously as possible. With a respectable time. All right, so he is, I believe, on his hot lap. Let's see if he's, if he's made any kind of improvement. There. Around the corner. As before, he likes to take a little bit more of a wide line, square it off, get on the power as aggressively as he possibly can, using just enough load on the outside. And let's see if he can improve his time. I do not believe that he did. Could have possibly been his outlap. So let's stay on with him again, since he looks like he is the driver that will be. Oh, he's he's lost it there. And Jovi's right behind him too to take full advantage. Coming up on the five-minute mark before the qualifying starts. As I mentioned before, this race is brought to you by SSI Racing School, eSports and race driver coaching. We do online race driver coaching as well as simulation driving in the mobile simulator. We travel to all of the go-kart tracks, a lot of the California big tracks with their mobile simulator driver development program. It's also brought to you by Cameron Party, a party team owned by the legendary Steve Cameron, New Zealand, out at Sears Point or Sonoma Raceway, depending on which term you want to use. I'm a little bit older, so I say Sears Point. You get some We're both right. Four more minutes. Has Jovi improved on his time there? Oh, just missed the Spider-Man car there. I don't, don't know if it's a Spider-Man car, but it is reminiscent of the Spider-Man color scheme. Is that Tristan? No? That's Sean. That's Sean. Oh, off the road. So he might have had some damage. Justin Brester. I don't think we've seen from him. During this session, he must have just jumped online. Looks like he's a rookie. So probably coming out here just to have some fun and watch all the fast boys and learn the learn the ropes. We drive the track right now. Getting those last few laps in. Understand all the nuances. Trying to develop some consistency. Again, like I said, mentally preparing himself for the upcoming qualifying session. Get out of the power. Sometimes that's a, a little bit of a tricky thing to do. You get out of the power mid corner because you'll potentially run into a snap oversteer situation. So he was very lucky that didn't happen. Okay, a couple more minutes. I think 
chance. Crum is on his out lap. As we mentioned before, he's uh, at, at the moment, the new driver that is looks like Hader just did some good improvement there. He's now up to seven points. So chance Crum. Second place. I mentioned before my lap's not going to count. I'm going to get a few laps. And so I will not be part of this race, no matter how much I want to. <laughs> my job to narrate and commentate for the. Oh! So that might have been it. Yeah, that was his last opportunity to make an improvement. I see that Jack Woolstead has just jumped online. And, uh, but he is all but missed practice session, so he will go straight to the qualifying session, and uh, hopefully he's got some offline practice of this car track combination. I made the announcement yesterday that we were going to be doing this, and as I mentioned before, it's probably a little more fair that he didn't spend a lot of time with the practice session because he and I worked on the setup. Okay, that'll conclude the practice session. And as I mentioned before, this is uh, this is going to be a. How's everybody doing? Fantastic. All right, the drivers are now making their announcements. Hey Tony, I was in uh, team team speak, but it, you guys so weren't hearing me, so that, disable it. I had something wacky with some changes I made with my. Okay, so we don't want to hear the drivers while we're while we're commentating. Um, they can talk amongst themselves, but now we're going to be going into the qualifying sec section of this track. All right. So as I mentioned before, this is going to be a live session where it's a lone qualifying session. So all the drivers are going to be out on the track by themselves, getting in their lap times. And with that, we'll go to a quick break.
Okay, so now we look like the drivers have started to do their qualifying session. And as I mentioned before, it is a lone qualifier, so we can't go on board. We're just going to see the lap times up in the left-hand corner there. And from there, you'll notice that Jovi has, is sitting on provisional pole with a 1 minute 31.997. And uh, Chance Crum is trailing behind him by just about a half a second. I don't know. Oh, Hunter Crum. So these guys must be brothers. Interesting. Um, okay. And is, is trailing around in third place. So there could be some uh, interesting things during the race. If one of them helps the other with uh, some slipstreaming, we may get some uh, partnerships that will take the fight to Jovi if they can keep it clean. So fourth place is Hayter. Hyder, I, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing last names, but Tristan Hayter Hyder from the Northwest is now in fourth place. He's put in his qualifying effort. It's trailing at about two seconds behind. Sappenfield in fifth place. And Jack Ulsted, who has uh, been a late Bloomer here has put in a qualifying effort that's about within 3.4 seconds. And uh, Todd Bonner from California, got a lot of California folks here, which, like I said before, makes perfect sense. Jack Ulster just jumped up to sixth place, only about 2.4 seconds off the pace at this point. So he's finding some, some lap times there as well. All right. Here we go. So Jovi is now 1 minute 31.997. And uh, Chance Crum, who was following him around, is roughly about 3 tenths of a second off the pace. So he obviously found some time during the practice session. And uh, which I believe is his brother, Hunter Crum, both from the Northwest, same last name, may have uh, some interesting things to unfold from there. Um, Todd Hader is now up to fourth place within about two seconds. And Michael Kofoid within 2.2 seconds. So we're about 6 minutes and 36 seconds into the qualifying session. They've got 10 minutes to complete four laps. As I mentioned before, the practice session is not always indicative to what the pace is actually going to be because the laps will still count if they go off the road or if they do an off-track excursion and they still get a lap time. It'll still count it. So the qualifying is going to be very different. It's got to be a clean lap. It's got to be within the boundaries that is guided by uh, iRacing. And so these are the real times. They also can't benefit from, uh, from slipstreaming. They're out there by themselves. So Chance Crum is right on the, right on the heels of, of Jovi Levin. Jovi Levin, as I mentioned before, is a former student of SSI Racing School and a longtime go-karter multiple champion indoor karting and multiple podium finisher in outdoor karting in the Rotax Senior Rotax Series with Ron White Racing, also a friend of mine. Okay, so it looks like Jack has now jumped up to fifth place. Jack Woolstead is, is again, a longtime racer of, and friend of mine uh, out here in California, lives about uh, 20 minutes away from me. And he and I worked on this setup uh, to, to present a setup to the drivers that we felt was uh, drivable, consistent, and not too tail-happy. Um, and so hopefully that'll translate into a good race. Okay, we've got just less than two minutes here before the start of the race. Hopefully some of these drivers have practiced a... Uh, a standing start. So these cars will do a standing start from the grid. You can see the standing, the grid lines right here that uh, these cars do create a significant amount of wheel spin 
If you get on the power too early and you don't modulate the throttle, you'll just spin in place. Or if you, do, if you don't do it enough, then you, st you stay in place and your engine bogs down. So it's going to be pretty important to see who gets a good jump off the line because it can get crowded on the first corner very quickly and create havoc. Less than a minute here. Uh, I suspect at this point... Oh, okay. So finally, we've got some other drivers that have put in a time. They've completed a lap and established their place on the grid. Um, we've got 11 drivers that have put a time in. So we've got 11 drivers that will be up. Oh, Colfoid's up to fourth place. Looks like he's made a little bit of time. There's 30 seconds. So if you've crossed the finish line, uh, I believe you get another lap, but it's possible that you don't. Okay. As I mentioned before, this race is brought to you by SSI Racing School, the mobile driving simulator that travels around to all of the go-kart tracks and all of the Northern California racetracks like Sears Point and Laguna Seca. Okay, so that will end the qualifying session. Jovi has qualified on pole. And so now we're going to look at live start. Let's go on board with Jovi. And here we go. Waiting for the drivers to jump on the grid. Positions. Chance Crum in second. We're still waiting for Chance and Hunter to join the grid. All the drivers are revving the engine, getting ready for this start. Tensions are high. Looks like we're going to get a green pretty soon here. Got to get. Chance and Hunter revving the engine. Adrenaline pumping. There we go. There's Chance. We're waiting for Hunter to come. Take his spot on the grid. We will be on the way. Could be some cat and mouse playing here. Making everyone nervous. Hoping that they make a mistake. At the start, making them wait. Adrenaline's pumping here. It can be very difficult to maintain your composure in this situation. You want to get a clean start. You want to make sure that you don't make any contact with any other drivers. And these drivers are actually pretty good in this car, so it's very likely to have a fairly close race. If we can get a clean start, we can get past the first corner, then we should be looking at a fairly clean race. And Joby left the pull. Chance from, and we got the, we got the red. Lights go out. Green, green, green. And we're starting. Pull off. Joby got a poor start. Chance from. Chance from took the lead away from Joby. He he had a poor start, just like what we talked about. So he, just, he gets dropped down to, oh! This is exactly what we talked about. If you're not patient and you're not careful, then you can lose it all in the first corner. It's the age old saying, you can lose a race in the first corner. So, Michael Colfoy, up to the lead now. Second place, Todd Bonner. And we've got a tight knit group here. There's going to be some blocking going on. Caleb Smocks up to second. Three wide. Oh, another contact there. So that's going to create some damage. So Michael is able to avoid all of this melee. Him and Caleb Smock are just running alone by themselves. It looks like he ran a little bit wide to that corner. He was able to make it back. He's running wide here as well. They keep it clean. All of these guys, we've got Edgar in fourth place. The fact that they kept it smart and they kept it clean is evident in the fact that now they're running up front. 
cars are starting to split up into their typical paces. Michael's still taking the lead in that Ferrari livery, Lotus 79. Edgar is up to third place, trailing back by about 4.2 seconds, so he had to probably take some evasive maneuvers to avoid a lot of the accidents, creating that gap. So, oh, what happened to second place? Oh, no! I, I missed that. Okay, so that this is the battle for second place. Jovi's back up to second place now. He got it back from, from uh, Edgar. And let's see, Jovi's going to try to make an attack. If he can work his way back up to the front after that first corner mishap. Jack Olstead's up to third place. So a good buddy of mine, Jack Olstead, driving clean, smart as ever. I'm curious to see if he has any damage. It looks like he may have a little bit of damage on that road. Hopefully nothing too much. Keeping it clean. Keeping it smart. Now here's where we talk about if you want to have a little bit of a draft, you can have a draft that will benefit you down these long straightaways. By using the draft to catch up with somebody move the pass down. Two entirely different things. Okay, Frito is probably settling into, we call him Frito, but Edgar is finally settling into a nice pace that he's comfortable with, keeping the race clean. You can see very quickly, oh, Jovi just jumped back into the lead because it looks like Michael had an off. How quickly things are changing here, and the misfortunes of all of these drivers has been very fortunate for this guy right here, Jack Wilson of California, my buddy. And now is trailing around in second place behind Jovi. Jovi's leading up the time charts up to this point, and now creating a little bit of a gap between himself and Jack Wilson. Everything can change at the drop of a dime. The fact that a lot of these drivers probably got a little too anxious in the first quarter, created opportunities for guys that were typically a little bit off the pace, find themselves running up front. Great situation. Michael Copoid, who was leading just two laps ago, still only within 6.3 seconds, so he's, he's by no means out of the picture, he still has the potential to work up his way to a podium finish. If he can just get his head back in here, relax a little bit at the wheel, and get back to work. Interesting livery, Medgar. Always comes up with some creative liveries, this guy. Jack has, Jack has decreased the gap. Well, the gap was down to four seconds at one point, but he's dropping back here, so it's, it's possible that Joe is quicker through some sections of the racetrack, and Jack catches the first of the gap at other sections of the racetrack, so he is uh, by no means out of the picture as well. Uh, I suspect that the real battle is going to be between second through fourth, particularly fourth and third. Who is going to fight for that podium position? It's theirs to lose. There's always that fine line between pushing your car to the limit and pushing it over the limit and losing time. So it's that delicate balancing act of staying consistent Finding your marks, hitting them religiously. It's moves like that right there when you run wide and you miss your apex. The overdriving of the corner that enables people to close the gap. And it's also psychologically 
difficult for him to recover from that because the heart just jumps out of the chest. So that that wide right is very bigger to close the gap a little bit. So we can see here Jovi is just running away from the, from the group. He's maintained his composure again. He's found his rhythm. And let's see what you, this is, like I said, this is really gonna be a battle. Oh, was that lap traffic? Yes, that was, that was lap traffic. So, unfortunately for him, it off. Fortunately for the podium finishers, it didn't disrupt their efforts too much. So I believe that was Todd Bonner that crashed there. So he may be out of the race. So far we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drivers out of the race. Oh, as I say that, now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen drivers that are out of the race. A lot of them probably were from that first lap, that first corner excursion. Back on board with Jack. He's maintaining a steady pace in front of Edgar. But right behind Edgar, right behind Edgar is, is Michael. Michael and Tony are running neck and neck. So here's where Michael can benefit a little bit from that trap. Not a good place to make a move here. Let's see if he makes it smart. A little blocking going on there. Stays in the slipstream. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, how did he avoid him there? That's amazing. How he how he was able to avoid that. He may have had a little bit of contact with Michael, but that may have put Michael out of this race. I don't see him anywhere. He is in the pits. So his blocking effort pinched his corner and put him into that lazy slide that's, like I said, for these downforce cars, is almost non-recoverable. Once you go, oh, oh, look at that. Joel, is that Tony? He may have a little damage from, from contact, and I don't know, he might have had damage from the first lap of contact as well, so uh, he is actually, it appears, he's reeling in Edgar. This is going to be that battle for the podium, for the last podium step between Tony and Edgar. Edgar ran wide there a little bit. So Jack. Oh no, Jack has. Oh my goodness, that's that's a fatal error there. He is out of this race, and that promotes Edgar up to second place. How quickly! get into trouble. You just push it a little bit too hard and it's game over. Look at that. Tony is really struggling with some oversteer. And if, if I was him, I would just try to maintain a consistent pace at this point. Because he's already assured a podium finish, but you know what? Having said that, these are racers. They have a chance to go for it. Okay, and that's exactly what he's done. He's taken it. I do suspect that Edgar had made it a little bit easier for him at that point. He did not put up too much of a fight. And so that's promoted Tony up into second place. We really only have 10 minutes. So unless Joby makes a, a really massive It's going to be difficult for Tony to close that gap because he's got a gap of about 16.7 seconds. To make up! Oh, there he goes! Tony Guyada. Guyada has taken himself out of the race. And now we're looking at Edgar up to second place. This is like this is like a basketball game where. You're looking at score, 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 back and forth, back and forth, tight hit, tight hit, and the game just keeps changing. 
if we would have went off of the qualifying efforts, we would be looking at a very different grid right now. So we're looking at three cars that are still on the lead lap. Tony Guayada, Gualda is in the pits, presumably to try to get some repairs and maybe try to make an effort. But out of all the cars that qualified, we're left with three. Jovi, Edgar, and Joel. So let's see if these last three warriors can make it to the finish in these very tricky conditions. Again, we don't know if these drivers have any damage to their car. There's Edgar running wide there. Oh, no! Come on, Edgar, keep it, keep it going. We need three cars in the finish here. Keep it going. Get back on the track. Come on, you can do it. Okay, Joel's up to second place now. Inheriting second place. Here comes Edgar, okay. Good man, doesn't give up. He might have some damage. It looks like his, it looks like his alignment may be off. Yeah, his alignment's off. Yep, game over. So, we're looking at Jovi and Joel. The last remaining Warriors. This is like a gladiator event. Two Warriors going at it. He's 23 seconds behind Jovi. It's nearly impossible at this point. Although having said that, a lot of stuff has happened already up to this point that's, that's shaken out the grid. Edgar is, is going to try and crawl his way back to the pits. Since he's the only running car left, it is possible that he can just run the clock out on the track and finish in third place. All right, let's head back on board with Joel. Let's do some onboard footage with Jovi. Checking out that cool helmet scheme that he's got there.
day. Yep, he's in the pits. He's called it a day. So it's just Jovi and Joel. Yep. What's happened to Joel? Is he in the pits? Joel is out. So we must have missed something here. Joel crashed. My goodness. <laughs> Jovi is the last person at this event. Well, this is, this is a bit of a reminder to me that it may benefit all of the drivers to, to give them a little bit more practice time. Give them some more practice time. So what I'm what I'm going to plan on doing then uh, for next week's event is I'm going to open up a practice session a day before the event. Um, I I do think that everyone is going to need more time to practice these cars, uh, just simply because they are so difficult. They're very difficult cars. Keep on the racetrack. If they get into tricky situations on the track when they're trying to battle between drivers then they're going to benefit from their understanding of that vehicle two more minutes until the completion of this event it has been one incident after the other with one man standing I sure hope everyone had fun up to this point. It looked like they did, uh, but uh, yeah, like I said, I think that it's going to really make more sense to give these guys a little bit more time to practice. Poor old Jovi, out there by himself, probably doesn't know that everyone's out of the race, just focusing on his own little agenda there. And uh, might as well just jump on board, finish out this race on board with Jovi. Last lap, race. So that concludes the event. Again, congratulations to Jovi, Joel, and Edgar. It was a race of attrition, without a doubt. And that will conclude this race. Thank you again for everybody watching. We hope you had fun. We hope you enjoyed this. Expect another race next uh, Wednesday. I will open up a practice session uh, 
on Tuesday, probably for a couple of hours. I'll work on a setup that uh, is clean and consistent. And uh, I'll announce the car track combination Tuesday morning. And from there, everybody can essentially uh, get as much practice as they need to get as familiar with the cars as they want. I want to thank everybody for uh, their participation today and uh, everybody that is watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back next Wednesday for another fun and eventful day.